Greetings, this is Brother Nir from the National Association of Black Stuff Metro School and um, on, on NABS TV. We are interviewing today two sisters from the Ukutre Center for, for Learning. Uh, we have sisters uh, Grace and Sandra. Greetings, ladies. Thank you. Brother. Hello. Hi. Thank you very much for having us. You're welcome. So um, please explain the name of your school and how long has it been running? Yeah, with pleasure. So the name Akuta um, was chosen by some of our committee members. It means to equip, uh, empower, to, you know, give them the right tools. So it's basically equipping our children to be the best that they can be. So yeah, we were set up um, basically back in July we were established and it all kicked off on the back of the terrible murder, brutal murder of George Floyd that happened. And um, the Black Lives um, Matter movement. Indeed. And all that happened around it. So we had the Black Lives Movement, which had myself and my husband march in the streets of London okay. with all those young people. We came out for the first time. I'm not, you know, normally I don't do marches and protests but I felt the need to go out and join and it was so beautiful to see both white and black side by side marching with you know a common cause which was to you know address some of the unfairness and disparities faced by our black community. So this year, so, so this is um, July 2020? Indeed. Okay indeed. and Sandra how did you get involved? You know, I think Grace gave a call and um, at first I was like, oh Grace, I've got so many different commitments on, it's difficult. But I think that was it when I looked to see, was it what we were going to do deeper? We were going to educate, we were going to teach the truth of black history. We were going to teach um, um, English and maths of course subjects from seven up to GCC. I said to Grace, count me in. So that's, that's my role. So I teach um, as well as being one of the directors on the project and really having a fantastic time. So yeah. Uh, where, where, whereabouts is your school based? So we are based in Mitcham, South London. Okay. However, we are an online school. Okay, good. So we have a far reach. So, you know, at the moment, because of the COVID situation, when we're doing it, uh, delivering di digitally by mm -hmm. Zoom. So, and it's been awesome, to be quite honest. Excellent. And is there anybody else involved in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the school? Indeed. So it basically started um, with a conversation amongst friends. And, um, you know, that conversation led to what are we going to do to support our community? And it, we realised it had to start with education. And so in terms of... Name them. Involved, Pick them up. Name them. Who was involved? Oh, who's that? The people on our um, committee? Yeah, who else okay, we've, got, we've, we've got an amazing array of people. We've got um, Councillor Brenda Fraser, Councillor Agatha, I can't pronounce the last name, Councillor Joan Henry. They're amazing kind of councillors. And we've just recently had um, Black History, where we had the leader of um, Merton Council, Stephen Ambrolitis, the MP for Merton and Mitchum. We had the mayor for... Um, was it Merton? Merton? And they spoke amazingly. We also had... Um, um, Brenda Imanis, BBC um, correspondent. We had David Nita, um, who's known as a people's lawyer. So that's, you know, in such a short space of time, those are some of the most amazing people that we've had. And it was really nice when Stephen Ambrolitis, the leader of Merton Council, he said, oh, I've heard of Akuta and you're doing a great work. So that was are, they, are they involved in actually running the school? No, do you know what? No, they, they were involved in our black history, but in terms of running the school, yeah. I mean, we've got an amazing administrator. So he administrates it. Grace oversees it, of course. And some of our teachers, um, who's that, Chichi, um, Nima, Angela is our mass coordinator, um, Isabel, so many others, absolutely fantastic. And I um, mean, got, um, Juan, uh, Sarah Connor, who Sarah Connor, that's right. a first class degree holder in mass and the arts, and she delivers our black history every Saturday morning. And she's absolutely fabulous. The children relate to her because she's so young. So for them, they're she's looking young. at her and they see themselves this fabulous young lady who knows so much about our heritage and our history and how we've impacted positively in the UK. 
So yeah, so many people involved. We have governors such as Kemi. Um, and and a businesswoman. Yes. Yeah, I, th I think I think our committee there, there's such a, a cross section from all walks of life. But I think I, I think the way that I see it, and I know Grace would um, agree that we've just got the best of the best. We've got people that are, you know, was it kind of top of their field and um, really making progress in both industry and education. Was it working on the project and accountants? Can I just add also that our teachers, you know, are fabulous. They are awesome. They are committed, passionate, dedicated teachers who were prepared to work in the beginning for absolutely nothing. This was about volunteering their time to bring mm -hmm. about change. And um, so we, we are very fortunate and, and it's, we intentionally, we, it's not everybody that's interested that we recruit we bring on even though we need more teachers desperately but what we're looking for is people who have the heart of the child yeah. who understand that these children come from different backgrounds with different issues different things that are affecting them on a day-to-day -day basis and they don't use that against them or they don't allow they don't bring that in and they have um empathy yeah, for these children yeah, and yeah. It, to give them the best education for them to be the best that they can be. So what, you have, you have um, African history, what other lessons do you have? So along with black British history and all that goes with that, we, so that's for 30 minutes at the beginning of each session. And then our children break out into their classrooms, which is maths and English. Yeah, and we follow the national curriculum. That's, that's the key. Sure, yeah. that's fine, excellent. And so um, the current situation, uh, you're um, online at the moment. Um, what's the outlook for the future? So the, the interesting thing about being online at the moment, obviously that wasn't our in intention at the beginning. You know, We had this vision of having a conducive environment, feeding our children, sitting with them in small groups so that they had a very personal um, quality type of education. And then, you know, the, the sad thing was with COVID, that had to be abandoned. You know, venues weren't opening for new businesses or new opportunities. So we had to think out of the box and change very quickly what it was we wanted to do and deliver. But we felt that there was a sense of urgency in getting this project up and running that we couldn't just wait until the covid situation had finished sure, so sure. we had to do something and hence the reason we we came online what was, what was the premises you used before very what was, sorry what was the premises you used before what was it a library or account or what no well we've never gone into a premises because we were oh, born right. on the back of george floyd which yes. coincidentally was during the covid period you know, so you didn't have the opportunity. No, we've been born, you know, it's in lockdown. We were created in lockdown. Oh. But we felt that because the children had been out of school since March, many of them not going back until September, that was almost six months where the disparity between your national average and you know, children from our community, that disparity, that growing difference was a massive concern. And where we've got issues uh, in, in the community, such as county lines, knife on knife crime and things like this, we felt we had to do something that wouldn't, you know, which would starve off the need for our children to feel that they had to look in other directions yeah. and to give them that ability, that feeling of that they could aspire to, to, to be the best they could academically. And can I just to say one thing? I think um, when we were told, oh, it's impossible. You know, people said it's impossible. I remember Grace saying, no, we are going to start. You know, so I think that there was, I mean, Grace has been amazing in the sense that she's been the project manager. She's really driven it. And um, yeah, so, you know, so I think some of these setbacks, no, you can't start, it's impossible. Where are you going to get the children from? But they came, they came. Oh yeah, there's always a need, always a need. So, I mean, so what was the, um, the, the, the some of the low points in setting up, apart from people saying that you couldn't do it? Well, I mean, obviously, you know, we were told by people who are professionals who work within the council that it was not feasible, actually, and, and, and not probable. It's, it was my time frame was totally unrealistic. Um, and from hearing that, we were set up, registered, ready to go, launched within a month. <laughs> well done. Excellent. And so, you know, there is nothing that's impossible.
and you know if you've got a pattern and you know something needs to happen we need to start putting our, our you know empower behind our words and actually put action behind our words yes and um, so you know we, we launched so that was it went from a very low point to quite a high point mm. um, obviously not having a venue initially was a very low point mm -hmm. and again you know sometimes what's meant for bad you can use for good and so what started as a low point the fact that we didn't have a venue has actually worked very favorably because it had meant that very very quickly we had a bigger reach we were able to um, bring children who would normally you know where families would be anxious about the risk factor of coming face to face more children were able to access the learning and we've already seen their outcomes begin to change so that was a very high point yes. uh, yeah, the, the high points yeah what are the high points yeah the high points we very very quickly we were asked um could we do something maybe for black history you know asked from our perspective mm -hmm. and within about three weeks we put on this event which you can find through our website the, the you know on youtube the event is posted mm -hmm. um we put on this event and we a, you know, we made a, phone, a few phone calls. We called Brendan Manis. Uh, she's a renowned uh, BBC correspondent and radio uh, yeah, team. Oh, very well. Mm. And she was, yep, yeah, I'm happy. Anything for the children. Uh, Dave Nita, he, he was amazing. He came and spoke to our children. He's yeah. a, you know, a established people's lawyer and yeah, he's a poet. <laughs> and um, we had people, high commissioner for education, various high profile people. Um, both locally and centrally, who, who joined that meeting. And, you know, it was so wonderful to be able to reach so many in a, such a short uh, time frame. Uh, I think we had about 91 uh, participants. Yeah, Not more. families, we're talking yeah. about, you know, registered participants. So, yeah, hmm. you know. and, yeah can, I, can I also add, um, I think another um, highlight that we um, have found is that because it's during um, COVID time and we had to, was it work online? I think now we've got, the advantage of both being on, you know, on digitally when, when, when things, was it when the lockdown, um, like, you know, if you're going to come to an end, that we've got the advantage of, um, was it both working digitally as well as in person. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's really good. We've got some teachers that live far afield and they said that they'll be happy to, to continue. We've also got some students that, you know, suffer from, you know, being in class, classroom anxiety. So, you know, they said that they're happy to be online. And I um, mean, as well, so yeah. It's a win-win situation once, once uh, the fact that you've got the ability to, to go online, you've got the practice, you've got the evidence, you can do it. Yeah, yeah keep on going, right? absolutely excellent. Yeah. Thank you. No, it's been wonderful. And we, you know, um, the, the, the school is free to all our families. Yeah. Free, wow, that's yes. excellent. It's about the child. Mm -hmm. It really is about the child and it's really, about changing the narrative in this country around what black people are. I like, I like your focus on black British history because a lot of times when we, when we do history lessons, it's always about Africans, Americans, and we tend to forget our own a lot, which I find quite infuriating. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, uh, black people have had a massive contribution in making Britain what it is today and shaping what it looks like even today. and that story is not often told yeah and again if you don't tell the whole story if you take out little blocks it's not the truth it becomes thwarted and i love what um, michael holdings the cricketer famous oh, yeah cricketer, <laughs> and he said something like you know the history is told by those in power mm -hmm. and they shape it the way they want it to look it is not told by those who receive the injustice or, you know, who are victims, but mm -hmm. those who are the victimizers. So, you know, sometimes when you don't tell the whole picture, it doesn't, it's not the truth. Yes. So hence, you know, we, we, we've, you know, for me, the fact that history is not really taught from a black perspective within our community, and yet every step of history shows that black people were involved and you've stripped that out not just the slavery but what happened before and subsequently is it's wrong and therefore we have a duty to teach it to our children absolutely and what, what kind of feedback are you getting from parents 
Phenomenal. We have had so many positive feedbacks. Um, for many parents, I've never seen a program like this, you know, that is you know, so reachable. Uh, you know, they, they're accessing this program in their front rooms, first and foremost. Secondly, you know, there is no fee. They're not paying for it. And the quality of delivery is exceptional. I mean, we have teachers who've been in the education system for decades in some cases. I won't say how many because it might be giving some <laughs> ages away. But hey, be proud of it. Be proud. Absolutely. The quality, I mean, I, I have the privilege and the honour of going through, going from lesson to lesson, you know, although I'm not physically walking the corridors. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm opening the proverbial doors by um, jumping into the various breakout rooms. And I am blown away by the quality of teaching. And already we're beginning to see the, not only the outcomes, but the, um, the want of our children to do better. Whether it's because we have them as a captive audience, we don't have that um, um, distraction of having them sit with their friends and therefore they're not always 100% engaged. These children are at home with their families, their families are in the room and they are 100% engaging. And it's just wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. Mm, it'd be interesting to see if um, some of the parents are actually learning from the, these um, yeah. lessons as well. Absolutely. <laughs> Myself, I have learned so much. I mean, I am walking around head held high, thinking, wow, you know, the things that, you know, I had no idea that we've been in the, on this land since the year 250 or year 300, and how we came to be in this land. It's phenomenal when you hear mm. some of the stories. And, you know, the fact that racism didn't really exist at one point. It's a relatively new phenomena that happened with the slavery and, you know, how they had to legitimize, you know, what, what they wanted to do. Yeah. So, you know, prior to that, there was no, she's black, she's white. We were one people. We were, you know, it, color was never an issue. Can I just um, quickly um, interject? I think the other thing that you said, Brother Naya, was um, it'd be interesting to see if the parents are, you know, learning as well. And mm -hmm. once, you, you know, was it we do go into a venue, what we do want to do is to do um, parenting kind of classes and to, um, was it teach parents how to support their children? So it's not just a child, but we want to do a holistic approach. And we have got people lined up that, was it want to kind of come and teach, you know, talk about parenting classes, how to support their children. And we want to do um was it training to, you know, in terms of was it kind of county lines drugs you know whatever mm -hmm. just to was it you know kind of educate parents just to kind of keep them informed so you know there's a, a low you know sort of plethora of was it professionals in the background police officers that you know as it will bring on board to empower our parents and, and, our, and our students so yes and for me from my perspective the one thing i want to um take the opportunity to to, to bring across is the fact that Parents, you are the first teachers to your children. Yeah. It is not just your job to clothe them and to feed them and to make sure they go to bed at a reasonable time. You are the first educators. Mm -hmm. Your job did not stop when you taught them colors or the first stages of, of their numbers. You are the first teachers. And when you send them to school, you're sending them in to get a support to what you're doing. Because a teacher is one person to 30 children. At home, it is you and your child. So, you know, that's the one thing that I try to bring across to our parents, that don't discharge your responsibility when it comes to education. You don't just you know, leave it to the school. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So we're here to help our families navigate their way through the education system as well. You know, we, we, we understand and we appreciate and we acknowledge that there are issues and weaknesses and flaws within the education system. Myself, I've had three children pass through the education system and still going through the education system. So I know what it is. I know what the issues are. But it's not enough to recognise that the issues are there. You have to take ownership. Absolutely. In bringing about the change. It's very important. Do you, do you have a children um, going through the system, Sandra? I do, yeah. I've got was it one daughter, she's doing her master's, and I've got a, 
another daughter, 19, she's um, again just kind of passing through the system. But I think that um, I think was it really what kind of Grace We just have to kind of be on the kind of case anyway, be on the kind of case, you know, ensuring that they just do all that they need to do. And I'm thinking that, that even in my day job, you know, I'm I'm a lecturer, and I think that say if I'm teaching um, adult students, my role is is really to kind of equip them, to prepare them, and to talk to them about the education system. And um, you know, I think the usual thing I would say to them. You know, was it when you go to parents even do not believe when if they say to your child's doing fantastic, you just don't believe them. You know, was it make sure that you know you're looking into their books, you know, you're you know, was it looking into the background, you can get um was it as much help as you need. And I think a programme like this is fantastic. And I it's funny because Grace and I were saying that if this was around when, you know, was it our kids were younger, you know, it would have been ideal, isn't it? You know, we would have oh, maybe goodness. paid all those thousands for tutors, but you know, anyway. Oh, but, yeah. my goodness. Oh, we've had sat schools in this country since the nineteen sixties, so they've always yeah. they've always been around. Just in yeah. case of like parents, which is why I sat up in the first place, is trying to get parents to actually access where these Saturday schools are. Because I, I, I took one to Saturday school when I, when I, before I knew about them, and I saw the benefits of them. You know, as a single parent, I'm meeting other single parents and they're complaining about the system and saying to them, why don't you send them to a Saturday school? And the first thing they always said was, I can't find one. Which is why I put in your school and all the other schools on one platform so all parents can access the services that are available in our community that are geared towards us and our children. Brilliant. I think what you've done is absolutely wonderful and it's so important for parents to realise there's more than one way to skin that book, that cat, you know, there's so many opportunities out there and opportunities that we weren't aware of ourselves. Right. So yeah, I mean, parents really ought to look at ways that they can tap in to support their child yeah. and, you know, this platform is just so good that they can actually find something local in their area if they want that face to face, and there's so many different um, organisations out there who are doing a wonderful thing. Yeah, Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. there's no more excuses. You know, well, get your well, children the best help possible that's out there in our community because yeah. there's so much of it right now. Yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, even you know, back in the sixties and seventies, there were Saturday schools like everywhere on every corner. They're all over the place uh, due to austerity. They've shut down and lost their funding. Yeah. And now we've got the ability to go online now, brought yeah. on by um, the lockdowns, but we're benefiting from these, you know, the access is going to start spreading out further and further again. This is a, a, another revolution in, in the um, African Heritage Suffrage School system. You know, I, I think, um, I remember some time back I had a student and she, her English was really advanced and I said, oh, I said, when did you go to school? And she mentioned it and she said, oh, but my parents made me go to a Saturday school and I, and I, saw, and I saw the difference. And I've also got students where, you know, say, They've been in education, as we know, from 11 to 16, just atrocious. And I said, where did you go to school? Oh, you know, why are you making these basic mistakes? And they goes, oh, Mr. you know, the class was really big. We just had supply teachers after supply teachers. And you see, can you imagine, for five years? And I think if that was in a wider school, it would never be the case. It would never be. But I think that it's... When it's children, you know, they're just kind of just on the side. So... Uh, Sanji, frozen. I, I, I remember the he, he had a terrible, um, but you know you have to support them. Yes. And you have to recognise that the school is not always the answer. You have to do your bit at home. You know, okay. and if you do your bit at home, you can make a ma major difference uh, in the lives of these young young people. And, I, and due to the services of yourselves and other supplementary schools, if you're unable to do it at home for whatever reason, whether you've got a mental illness or you just don't have the skills, the Saturday schools are there to help. Absolutely. That's what they're there for. And then also home educators. Do you have any um, home educators um, involved with your school? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, there's one. There's one. No, there's yeah. two. There's two. We have two children who are uh, at home and one of them, it just blows my mind away. I'm, I can't tell you names, obviously. But... You know, to think that, you know, the system didn't work, the school system, the state school system did not work for him. And the quality of his work is superb. He yes. is a beautiful young man who is flourishing at home. But it is such a shame that the school system wasn't there for him. It failed him. And, um, you know, in, in, in that instance, I'm, I'm very grateful that we're here to support those children because it could very easily be another story because the minute they're, you know, disengaged with education, they look for another out, outlet. And they very easily go downhill. Vulnerable. 
Absolutely. And we need, as a community now, we need to bring the village back to our children. We need to support these children and navigate their way through the system. We need to, those who are falling short or falling off the rails, there has to be that communal clip around the proverbial ear. <laughs> really? Yeah. What are you doing on the streets? Get back home. Come on. We need to stop the narrative about black and black crime. When is it going to stop? When? When, well, when, when 10 year olds are killing 10 year olds? When we deal with it. We can't keep on relying we, on the police. We have to get involved. We involved have it. to deal with it. The system will only report on what's going on. They're not going to help us. They don't have the tools to help us deal with it. We have to deal with this situation from within. And as soon as we start to say enough is enough, we can turn this around. And one, and one thing I say, I say about um, our African Heritage Supplementary School is that, that this is early intervention. Yes. This is yeah. early intervention. So I don't know of any child, I know plenty of come through the supplementary school system. They don't, just, they don't get involved in that nonsense because they understand yeah. about themselves, they have self-respect and respect yeah. for their people. And, and I, they really just do not get involved in this. And it makes a magnificent, yeah. significant yeah. difference to how our children think about themselves yeah. and about other people in their community. And, and, and Akala is a testament to that. Yes, you know, his absolutely. thoughts were wayward before he went to a supplementary school. It completely turned his mind around. Absolutely. You know, and when these children t speak to their grandparents who are heartbroken when they say, we came to make a better life. We worked so hard getting through the system and we see our children and they're talking about communal ownership, you know, who, 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 who are dumbing themselves down, smoking whatever they feel they want to smoke, you know, not feeling that they owe society and they don't even owe anything to themselves. It's heartbreaking for them. It really is heartbreaking to say they left their homeland, came here, and their children are doing drugs or getting into crime or, you know, not refusing to stay in, in the education system, don't want to do the best they can for themselves. It's, it's really, really, really sad. And so... Well, it's uplifting when we, when we understand that it's only a minority of children that are like that. The majority of our children are doing well and are right. going through the system. And this yes. is where we come in and we help and support those children. We support all the children, but all the majority the of our children are doing well. That story yes. needs to come out. Absolutely, I agree. And on that high, high and lovely note, Grace and Sandra, many thanks for what you're doing with the Culture Centre of Learning. Akuta, yes. So thank you very much for what you're doing. Keep the fire burning, keep in touch. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you, You're welcome. Thank you so much. All the best.